Garlic. I'm Derek Allen and this is Burnt Fat. Garlic. We all know what it looks like, we all know what it smells like, but do you really realize how versatile it can be? Today we're going to show you different ways to cut up and cook and process garlic in your kitchen while you're cooking. But first up, what is it? Garlic is a bulb. It grows underground, just like an onion. And they dig it up, they dry it out, and this is what we're used to seeing in the store. This is a mature garlic bulb. Down here, that's where the roots were. Up here, that's where the stem was. But now it's all dried out, and inside here, you have all the cloves. All you need to do is just peel away the skin or the, the paper here, and inside you're gonna find all the cloves of garlic. Sometimes up to 20 cloves of garlic can exist in just one bulb right here. So we're used to seeing it either individually or maybe in some, uh, some sort of like mesh wrapping here. But there's other ways you can find it in the store too. You might actually find it pre-peeled. You find this in the, the cooler section of your produce uh, area, in, area in the supermarket. You might have it in a bag. This one here has a few uh, pre-portions. Um, you might be used to seeing it in a jar actually too. Then there's also pre-processed garlic. Well, we've got some crushed garlic. We've also got some chopped garlic. You'll find this in the produce section also. And it can either be stored in olive oil or maybe even water. Okay, so we're starting with the bulb. Now, how do you get to the cloves? My method of attack, just peel right into it and just start peeling all the skin away. Now, garlic is one of those things that's gonna be in cuisine found around the world. Um, maybe one of the main reasons is because a lot of people believe it's got a lot of like really strong health benefits. Some believe it might help against stomach cancer. Some say it fights viruses, bacteria. If you have congestion, it'll help clear that up. I'm not a doctor, I can't say, but I, <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's this uh, Cuban restaurant here in Los Angeles. It's called Versailles. They have a garlic pork dish you reek, absolutely reek when you're leaving the restaurant. But if I'm sick, I head over there, I always feel better the next day. So there might be something to that whole myth, if you will. All right, so as you can see, I'm just peeling away everything. Got all this paper in my garbage bowl. But this is what we're looking for. There's the cloves that we're actually gonna start to process now. Okay, so we busted into the bulb and now we're left with all the, the cloves of garlic. And you're gonna notice the size difference here. There's large ones, there's small ones. Um, for me personally, I just aim for the large ones. They're easier to get into, use those for cooking. The small ones, they're just too small sometimes to actually try to peel them and cut them. It's just a pain in the ass. So, you know what, garlic's cheap. You can just go ahead and throw those away. If you didn't want to throw them away though and you actually wanted to use them for something, make an experiment out of them. Actually plant them in like a flower box or something. See what happens. Maybe you'll be left with some garlic. But like I said, I'm just going to stick with the, uh, the large ones. So I'm just going to throw these away for today. Now we're left with these, these uh, garlic cloves and they're going to have like this uh, hard paper on the outside. So we need to peel that away. There's a couple ways to do it. The first way is to just a simple peel. And what I do for that is I just cut off this little root portion right here. That was uh, attached to the base of the ball where the root was. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off. And that's gonna expose all that paper and that hard stuff. Now you can just kind of like squeeze on it. See how if you squeeze it, it comes away? It's real easy to peel then. You can just peel all that away. The second method to actually get into this clove and get the, the paper stuff away is called the smashing method. I don't know if that's official or not, but that's what I call it. Just take your chef's knife, set the garlic clove down on your cutting board, place the knife flat on top like that, and just very carefully with your hand open, you don't want to cut yourself, but just smash right down. That's going to make it real easy to get into the garlic clove. This way is much easier, so you're probably asking yourself, why do the other way, the peeling method? That's mainly because there are times that you actually want to keep the clove intact with some um, firmness to it. The crushing method here, this is going to just spread it out. Sometimes you actually want to keep it completely intact. You will notice also that uh, as you're processing your garlic, you're going to get that garlic smell all over your hands. And you might want to try to get rid of that. Now, there's some old wives tales, if you will, about how to actually get rid of that. One I've heard is you can actually um, rub lemon on your hand and that lemon is supposed to neutralize the garlic smell so you won't have any garlic left on your hands. I still smell garlic usually. Another one is to rub it on uh, stainless steel. So like maybe a stainless steel bowl or a spoon or something like that, and that's supposed to neutralize it. I don't know. To me, now I'm gonna smell like lemon and garlic, or I'm gonna smell like steel and garlic. It's kind of like when I was growing up, they always used to say if your dog got sprayed with a skunk, give him a bath in tomato juice. My dog always just smelled like tomato juice and a skunk, so who knows.
So we've gotten into our cloves. We just finished smashing these cloves right here. And you can actually use these as is. I like to use these smashed cloves in a, like a braised dish, like pot roast or something, or even stew. I just feel by smashing it, it opens it up and I can just toss this whole thing in. It works really well with those braised type dishes. Another way you can actually use these cloves is to cut them up into little chips. Basically just really carefully hold it down and you're just gonna slice into little chips. Now some people actually like it when say they're doing a rice peel off or something. They actually like to have this whole garlic presence like a good sized chip. Another thing you can do if you'd like, you could actually use these and fry them up in some olive oil and use them as chips, like little garlic chips. They make a great garnish to a lot of dishes. I know in some Asian cuisine they use garlic chips um, with their pastas. Okay, and finally what we're gonna do is actually mince up, mince up some garlic. You would do this anytime you see minced garlic or chopped garlic in a recipe. And for this, just go ahead and just slice it up and keep cutting. Do a couple cloves here. Now just anchor your knife. Just keep chopping. Gather it all together and just keep chopping. And basically, you just keep going until it's as small as you actually want it. So there we've got the chopped or minced garlic. Now I'm just gonna put this in a ceramic in here because I wanna show you another method that you can use for this if you wanna get it really, really fine. Say that the recipe called for just like super fine, almost so fine it was like a paste of garlic. There's a method that you can use by using some coarse salt like a kosher salt or a rock salt or something and um, it almost acts like a uh, mortar and pestle. Did I say it right? <laughs> I always get that word wrong. Just doesn't make sense to me for some reason. Anyway, it acts like that and the salt and you actually use your knife to grind the salt in and it just really, really just presses down on the garlic and smushes it up so you get a really uh, fine paste. So again, we're just gonna chop. With a chop and gather like you did before. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some kosher salt there. And then you just take your knife, set it down and you press. Bring it back together and you press. You can chop it up a little bit more, then you just press it again. And that salt will just slowly eat away at it and it's just gonna smush it all up into a nice fine paste. So here's the paste. This is gonna be our finest garlic. We cut that up so it's just really small and really fine. And that's gonna be our strongest garlic too. Basically the, the way you wanna think about garlic is the smaller it is, the more uh, pungent it's gonna be because you're exposing that much more garlic really. So this paste is gonna be super strong. Mince is gonna be pretty strong. The chips are gonna mellow out a bit. The smashed, even more mellow. And these are gonna be your least pungent out of all of them. Okay, so we've processed the garlic, we've peeled it, we've cut it up into all those different sizes. So now what? All right, we're gonna start with the, uh, the whole garlic clove, the one that we didn't smash. Now this has a couple uses. First up, we're gonna show you how to lard a roast. Now a roast could be beef, it could be pork, it could be chicken, whatever you uh, want to apply this to. But basically with this process, all you're gonna do is just take a knife, this is a paring knife, and you just cut a slit into your roast. And then you insert the whole garlic. and just kind of push it back together. Now this is one reason why you wouldn't want to smash it because obviously when you're pushing the, uh, the garlic clove into the meat, it needs to have like a firmness. It needs to be like really, really um, firm so it can actually push down in without just like crushing. Now just want to explain something really quick. It's called larding, the base word being lard, which is fat. This actually comes from a really, really old method of uh, cooking a roast where they would freeze little fat pieces and then they would cut these slits and stick the fat in there and that's the larding process right there. And that would just kind of in introduce some more fat into the roast which always contributes more moisture. But you can kind of apply that same process here with the garlic. The second application for using the whole clove of garlic is actually to make garlic crostinis. So what I've done is I just sliced a, a baguette fairly thin on a bias right here and I stuck it in the oven just to get it really crispy and golden brown. 
And from here, you wanna make sure you do this while it's still hot, but you take your whole clove of garlic, and again, you want this to be firm, so that's why we're not using the, uh, the smushed up one. You just take that and you just rub it on the hot bread. Just get it in there. And the heat actually melts the garlic a little bit, so just the, the essence, the juices, the garlic really gets into the bread. And again, you wanna do it all when it's hot, so you try to get through there really quick. So you'd work your way through this, then you just drizzle it with a little olive oil. Very little. And then you eat it. It's really spicy because the garlic is really, really strong. This is awesome, it's so good. What you can do, you can serve it like this. We can actually serve it like this with like spaghetti or something like that, excuse me, as I eat and talk. But um, if you want also, you could just like build a bruschetta on top of this. You could do like some chopped tomatoes and uh, basil, however you want to do it. But this is so good. Like I said, it's a little bit spicy, but it's also awesome. so good. You don't actually have to break it down into cloves to use garlic. You can actually use the whole bulb. You can use this bulb and make roasted garlic. Just put the garlic on a sheet of aluminum foil and drizzle with about a tablespoon of olive oil. And then just season with some salt and some freshly ground black pepper, maybe a teaspoon to a tablespoon of each. And then just wrap it up and put it into a 350 degree oven. Now when it's roasting, you're probably going to want to keep it on a cookie sheet or something just in case you get any oil leaking during the roasting process. We roasted our garlic about 45 to 50 minutes. And you can tell when it's done because your house is just going to smell so like sweet garlic smell. It's smells fantastic. Philip and I actually went out and just had a quick lunch when we were roasting the garlic, came back in and you could just smell, the garlic just penetrated the whole house. It was awesome. All right, when it comes out of the oven, you just set it aside on a plate or something. Like right here, I just set it on this plate and you let it cool. You're gonna wanna let it cool for a little while because you want it cool enough so you can handle it. After that, you just unwrap it. Now we're just gonna cut off the top. Real gently because it's gonna be really, really soft. And you can see the garlic has totally changed character. It's really, really soft and it's actually caramelized. That's the roasting process right there. Now, just squeeze it out. And it's all nice and soft and gooey. It's messy, but it's interactive. But look at that. It just completely changes the character of the garlic. It's really, really sweet. It's really, really soft. Now from here, you can use this. You can. You can use it in spreads. You could put it in mashed potatoes and have roasted garlic mashed potatoes, like mix it in with mashed potatoes. Or you can even make like a, uh, a roasted garlic aioli. Just take this, mix it with some mayonnaise and use that as a spread on a sandwich or even crostini. I mentioned earlier that you could actually use the, uh, the smashed garlic and throw it into a braised dish like a pot roast or something. But you know what, you can actually braise the garlic itself. Now when we roasted it, it had a very sweet, tender, soft, almost spreadable character. By braising it, it's gonna get really soft, but it's not gonna be as sweet and it's not gonna be as spreadable. With braising, we're actually gonna introduce it to um, some chicken stock, some wine, and a little bit of lemon for acid, and some seasoning also. And what that's gonna do is gonna, the garlic's gonna take on all those flavors and the garlic sauce is gonna contribute its garlic flavor to that, that sauce. And then you could actually go ahead and use that sauce for another dish, maybe a chicken dish later on. Let's get started though. Place your sauce pot over a medium high flame and then add some olive oil, about two to three tablespoons. You're gonna let that oil get nice and hot and then add the garlic. What we're looking for here is some really nice deep browning on all sides of the garlic. We're looking for some really, really nice caramelization just like that. When you see that, take the garlic out of the pot, just set it aside for the time being, and then we're gonna get rid of that fat and just pour that off into another bowl. Now we're gonna add our liquids. Be careful, the pot is very hot, so watch out for steam here. We're gonna start with the chicken stock, then we're gonna add some fresh lemon juice and some dry white wine. Now we're gonna season the liquid. We're gonna use some kosher salt and some dry thyme. With the dry thyme, it's always good to rub it in your palm first to release the oils and then just add the garlic back to the pot. Notice the garlic isn't swimming in the liquid. It's gonna come about halfway up the garlic and that's what you're looking for. Now just put a lid back on, bring it up to a simmer and let it simmer for about 20 minutes. So our braise is done. Basically all you do to tell if it's done is you take a fork and you stick it into the garlic. If the garlic is really nice and fork tender, you're good to go. Usually it only takes about 15, maybe 20 minutes for you to braise garlic on the stove top. So we're just gonna take the garlic out of our braising liquid and how would you use this? You know what, you could let it cool and you could use it in a salad. 
The one thing about braised garlic, it actually, um, it stays fairly firm, like I was explaining. When you roast the garlic, it gets really tender and almost spreadable. This is still gonna maintain its texture. It's still gonna be a little bit firm. So you could use this almost like a water chestnut, a really flavorful water chestnut in a salad. Or you could just go ahead and braise it and serve it warm as an accompaniment to a plate, some, some dish that you did. Now also notice that we're gonna have this braising liquid. Now this liquid, this had thyme, this had salt, this had lemon, wine, and chicken stock. There's a lot of flavor in there. You could go ahead and just take this, reduce it a little bit more if you wanted to, but use this as a sauce on your plate also. So next up we're gonna talk about sweating the garlic. Now when you sweat, the whole process usually is to develop flavor layers. And what you're gonna do, typically like say a pan sauce, you're actually gonna start with maybe some onions or shallots on the bottom, and then you're gonna add the garlic on top of that. And you're gonna use the, uh, the minced or the chopped garlic. Now, the thing is, you wanna be very careful. With sweating, you don't wanna go for a really high temperature. You actually wanna go for a little bit more of a mellow temperature, like medium to maybe a medium high. Kinda of depends on your stove, so you have to get familiar with your stove there. And you know that the sweat is really going well when it becomes aromatic. What is gonna happen is the garlic's gonna to start to release its essence, basically, and you're gonna just get this nose full of garlic. That's when you're good to go. So let's get going. So we're gonna start off. We're gonna get our flame going. Like I said, we want maybe a medium. So this is a high flame. We're gonna bring it down. There's low, so I bet you right there is a good medium flame. Now we're just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil, and then you just add the garlic. Again, you don't wanna sizzle here. You're just really going to get the essence out of it. When you're sweating garlic, just stir that in. With the sweat, you can also add a little salt too because here we want to release the juices. The one thing here you do want to be careful of, if you had a very, very hot pan, you're going to burn the garlic. If you burn the garlic here, that's just going to be really, really bitter. So if you're making a pan sauce, your pan sauce is going to be bitter. We're just looking for a really nice, mellow cook. There we go. We're starting to get a little action here in the pan. I'm getting a really strong scent of garlic right now. So you know what, I'm going to turn that off because we're ready for our next layer of flavor. Next up, we're gonna deal with the, uh, the garlic slices. Now, early on, I said that you could actually use this for like a pilaf dish, but I also mentioned garlic chips, and that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm heating up some olive oil in a, uh, a skillet here, and it's, um, it's a little bit of olive oil. It's a good level here. So we're gonna do like a shallow fry. Um, and these are great because you can actually use these as a nice crunch contrast in some dishes. Maybe on a salad, you could have this garlic chip crunch in the salad. And as I said earlier, a lot of Asian dishes, Asian dishes employ this when they're actually making their noodle dishes. They'll put the nice crispy garlic chips on top of those soft noodle dishes. Good contrast. Good way to test is just go ahead and drop one chip in. Now there's no bubble coming up, so this isn't ready yet. But you're gonna see it's gonna start bubbling. So this is still just a little bit too cool. There we go, we got the bubble right away. Basically here we're just looking for a nice golden brown. As I said, you don't wanna burn them. Like I was talking about with the, uh, the minced or the chopped garlic, when you sweat it, if it's too high, you're gonna burn it and it's gonna be bitter. Same thing with these chips. We just wanna get a nice crunch, a nice golden brown on it. If they take it too much past that, it's gonna be really bitter. All right, some of them are starting to turn right now. As you can see, look at that. That's a nice golden brown. Just put it on a paper towel to let it drain out. So as you've seen, I've been using my perforated sp spoon or your slotted spoon. Now I'm just gonna go ahead, these are looking really good. Take those out, put them all on the paper towel to strain. Shut my flame off. I've got garlic chips. Let's talk about storing your garlic. All right, when you store garlic, you wanna keep it in a cool, dry, well-ventilated area, preferably away from sunlight. What's gonna happen if you expose it to sunlight is gonna encourage the garlic bulb to actually start growing. So you're gonna get the sprout, the green sprout coming out at the top. When that happens, your garlic's gone bad. You wanna go ahead and throw that away. Another sign that your garlic's gone bad is if it molds over. And that's why we keep it out of the refrigerator. The refrigerator, yes, it's dark and it's very cool, but there's also a lot of humidity in the refrigerator and that's gonna encourage your garlic to actually start to mold. So here in this kitchen, what we do is we just keep it in this pantry cupboard. It's a lot of space in here, so it's well ventilated. It's away from sunlight. It's very, it stays fairly cool in there and uh, it's nice and dry in there too. Now, if you went to the supermarket and you got maybe the, uh, the pre-peeled garlic, 
all you're gonna wanna do here is just make sure you treat it like they did in the supermarket. Keep it sealed and keep it in the refrigerator. That's how you bought it, that's how you're gonna store it too. And finally, we're gonna talk about these uh, pre-processed. Now, normally, we said some come in water, but normally these are gonna come in olive oil. And maybe some of you have heard or actually do this yourself where you store garlic in oil. If you're gonna do that, just make sure you keep it in the refrigerator. Once you open these, in the refrigerator. If you're gonna do that at home, in the refrigerator. Reason being, I don't know the science behind it, but there's something with garlic and oil that when they're together and it's a warm temperature above 50 degrees, they actually develop bacteria which leads to botulism, which is food poisoning, very bad food poisoning. So if you're gonna do the oil and garlic thing, keep it in the refrigerator. Okay, enough about that regular garlic. Let's talk about the uh, different varieties of garlic and the byproducts of the garlic plant itself. First up, let's talk about this. Check that out. It's huge. It's elephant garlic. Look at that compared to this. It's huge. This right here is milder and sweeter than your normal garlic. So if you're somebody that's really sensitive to the pungency of normal garlic, you might want to try this out. Check it out. Look in your supermarket or maybe some specialty food stores or farmer's markets. Use this the same way you would normal garlic, but like I said, it's just gonna be milder and a little bit sweeter. Now, with a garlic plant, that's gonna have some byproducts to it. As they plant the bulb in the ground, it's gonna to start to develop, and as it comes through the ground, the first thing they're gonna get is a garlic sprout. Now, you've heard of bean sprouts, you've heard of alfalfa sprouts, they use those in salads and wraps. Use a garlic sprout the same way, it's just gonna have a really nice garlic flavor to it, so you can put it in a salad. You could actually use it as a garnish when you're doing your nice supper plate. Um, as that begins to develop even more, you're gonna get what's gonna look like a chive or a scallion, but it's gonna be from the garlic, and you're gonna have a really nice garlic flavor. So use it the same way you would chives or scallions, but now you're just gonna have a really nice garlic hint to it. And finally, as it really develops and is just about to blossom into its flowers, they actually pick those seed pods before they blossom, and those are called scapes. Now the scapes, they actually treat a lot like um, almost an asparagus. You could saute them, but again, it's gonna have that mild cho uh, chocolate, garlic flavor to it. <laughs> um, just so many variations, so many things that you can do with garlic and the byproducts of the plant. There's actually a restaurant here in Los Angeles called The Stinking Rose. It's devoted completely to garlic. They have just explored and experimented and come up with just all these recipes and ideas for garlic. And the whole restaurant is based on that. It's a garlic-themed restaurant. And um, if you go up north here in California, in Gilroy, California, they have a garlic festival. Again, they've just explored and gone way beyond and just discovered that garlic can be used in so many different ways. We've only shown you a few options here today, but we really want to just introduce the idea of just having fun in your kitchen, experimenting in your kitchen with not only garlic, but everything that you find in your kitchen. Experiment. Treat it like a laboratory. Have fun. Bring everything out to its full potential and just make everything your own. I'm Derek Allen. This is Burnt Fat. Have fun.